Hey yo, what's good reader fam? Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm bringing you the best books of 2019. Not just the best books, but the best books that I read in the year of 2019. I don't really have a say in what the best books of 2019 are, but these are the best books that I read this year. It was honestly just an average reading year for me, which I really don't enjoy saying. I wish that I had the best reading year of my life, but that's just not the case. I only gave three books a five-star rating this year. That makes me so sad. But to be fair, most of this year I was in a reading slump, so I just really didn't want to read that much. But I've dug myself out of that grave, so here's to hoping that I have the best reading year in 2020. That's my hope for the new year. Give me all the good books in the new year. I'm hoping that if I say it, I'm preaching it into existence. Only time will tell. So today's list mostly comprises of four-star reads, but these are four-star reads that I feel like are worth reading still. And besides, a four-star rating is a solid rating. It just means that they didn't reach favorite level. They were almost there, but they didn't quite reach it. It's honestly hard for books to kind of climb up onto my favorites list nowadays because I have changed from Jesse the Reader into Jesse the Picky Reader. I don't love that about myself. I'm trying to change a little bit. Hashtag 2020 goals. The last three books that I mentioned today will be the five star reads that I read this year. And not all of the books on this list came out in the year of 2019. I just read them this year and they made it on this list. So without further ado, let's get started. First up on my list, I have Furiously Happy. This is a memoir following the life of the author Jenny Lawson. In it, it dives deep into her experience with depression and anxiety. My thoughts on Furiously Happy. Now, I don't read much nonfiction, but I'm really glad that I decided to pick this one up and read it because it made me want to read more nonfiction. Have I read more nonfiction since reading this book? Nope. But I plan to at some point when I feel like it. Y'all should give me some solid nonfiction recommendations down below in the comments. Preferably ones that you think I'd be interested in and not ones that would put me to sleep. <laughs> While I did at some points feel like the narration style was kind of pushing at this OMG I'm so quirky and different look at me lol style of writing and at times that did really irritate me but I also really liked how personable this book felt. It felt like I was sitting down for coffee with a friend and they were just dumping all their life details on me in this really comedic way. It's a book that I found really easy to get through because there's so much hashtag relatable content up in it. I will say that there is a trigger warning for self-harm with this book so be aware of that if you want to pick this one up. Next on the list I have the book Want. This book is about this world that's divided where basically if you're wealthy you can buy things that help you live longer and if you're poor then you're basically screwed. There's this plague that's broken out and basically the rich can buy these suits that help protect them from it and the poor just end up infected and dying. And we follow Jason Cho. His mother was actually infected by this plague that's going around and she died. And he's pretty much had enough of just like sitting around and waiting for some change. He's like no I'm gonna get up off my tush and do something about this crap. When him and his squad begin forming a plan and begin to look into Jin corporations who are the people behind the life-saving suits. They find some shady shady things going on. So we follow their attempt in making things better in this sucky world. My thoughts on Want. Now this book ain't perfect necessarily. It's got its flaws but what book doesn't? Come on now my people. Our main character is very uncomfortable in the way that he thinks. Like the best way that I can put it is homeboy is perverted. So I get that being a reason why people might not enjoy this book but there were so many other things about this book that I loved. From the visuals of the world I I kind of feel like I created my own vision of what this world would look like. I kind of envisioned everything as very Tron-esque. I think I kind of took it upon myself to build up that image. I don't think it was the one that was written, but whatever, it's fine. I loved the setting that this book was set in. It was set in Taipei, and it was the first book I've ever read that was set in Taipei. And I also just loved the drive of our main character. I loved seeing him set this goal and just chasing after it with all that he had. It was just all around epic, and it wasn't too over the top, in your face, when it came to the sci-fi elements. Next on my list, I have The Night Tiger. This is a historical fiction book with a bit of a fantasy twist to it. We follow two different perspectives in this book. First up, we've got Ji Lin, who is an apprentice for a dressmaker, and on the side, she is also a dance hall girl. She uses the money that she gets from that to help pay off her mom's debts. One night when she's dancing away, one of her partners gives her a gift that she didn't really want, and that is a thumb. A full-on severed finger. That's quite the gift. Then we follow Rin, who is 11 years old, and right before his master passes away he has this big request from Rin and that is to find his severed finger and to return it to his body within 49 days otherwise his master is going to roam the earth forever as a ghost. Spooky! My thoughts on the Night Tiger. I loved learning more about Malaysian culture through this book because this book is just like drenched in Malaysian culture. That was definitely a highlight for me with this book. The magical bits threaded throughout this book were just executed in such a fantastic way. I'm a pretty big fan of books that are kind of trippy and weird and while this wasn't the trippiest 
trippiest book I've ever read. It still served some trippiness and I was all about it. The Chinese folklore was also a really interesting part of this book. This was a book where after I finished it and the more that I thought about it, I liked it even more. After I read it, it kind of entered into that sinking in stage and I just soaked up its greatness. I definitely think it's one of those books where you could read it several different times and get different things out of it. And I definitely want to reread it in the future. I loved seeing the two storylines come together in all its magical goodness. That's something that I feel like I'm a sucker for in books. When you've got these two storylines that mish mash together and make the best mashed potatoes. That made no sense. Love that. Now I want mashed potatoes. The next book on my list is How to Make Friends with the Dark. This book is about this girl named Tiger and her whole life it's just been her and her mom. That's all she's ever known. But the day that tragedy hits and her mother passes away, she starts walking down the path of the unknown. And she must learn to cope with the hardships that she's facing and learn to make friends with the dark. My thoughts on How to Make Friends with the Dark. This is just a sad little book that will just have you all sorts of wrecked when you finish it. It's not a book that's easy to read because most of it you're just like, wow, this character's life really sucks. But in my opinion, it's one of those books that's really worth reading. It has just such a beautiful and honest depiction of grief and what it's like to go through such a hardship, like losing somebody who is super close to you and just what it takes to get through that rough situation and how you can find it in yourself to keep walking down the path of life. Again though, I just want to be clear, crystal clear, it's dark. It doesn't really let up on the darkness at all. It doesn't really provide you with any source of light, aka there is no source of happiness in this book. So if you plan on reading this one, then just know that it's not the most lighthearted read out there. Next on my list, I have Down Among the Sticks and Bones, which is the sequel to Every Heart a Doorway. This follows the side characters of Jack and Jill. We followed them before they ended up at Eleanor West's home for wayward children. And we see them as they discover their door to their world and all the things that happened in that world. My thoughts on Down Among the Sticks and Bones. This series is just so great for several different reasons. They're short books and they're easy to fly through. The characters and plot are solid. They're adventurous, exciting, weird, and magical. And it just packs in so much in such a little amount of time and you just leave it feeling so satisfied. Despite it being such a small book. I mostly really enjoyed this because I loved getting a background on Jack and Jill because when you read about them in Every Heart of Doorway, you're like, wow, these characters are dark and strange. Why are they like this? This book tells you why they're like that. Okay, we are now opening the door into five-star territory. Next up on my list is The Fountains of Silence by Ruta Sepetis. This book takes place in Madrid in 1957. During that time, they were under the dictatorship of Francisco Franco. We follow a boy named Daniel who is visiting Spain with his family as his dad has some business he has to attend to. His mom is from Spain and so he's taking it as an opportunity to kind of dive into her culture and learn more about Spain. Then we follow Anna who is working at the hotel that Daniel and his family are staying at and she's been assigned to help them with their every need. I feel like the best way to describe the rest of this book is that there's just a lot of secrets and we kind of uncover those secrets as we read on. I feel like that was the worst description ever. I'm sorry, I'm the worst, but this book is the best. My thoughts on the Fountains of Silence. Ruta did the dang thing with this book. I will say that it's not the most fast paced or exciting story out there, but it has this nice subtle shock factor to it. And that subtle shock will shake you up. I think something that this book really excels at is relationships. In terms of romantic relationships, friendships, and also family relationships. I will say that learning more about this time period in Spain was probably like the highlight of reading this book because while I knew a little bit about it, I didn't know that much. And while I can't necessarily take this book as like a guidebook to that time period, I still felt like I learned quite a bit reading this book. It was pretty informative. Next on my list is A Map of Days by Ransom Riggs. I finally read it! Hallelujah! This is a continuation of the Peculiar series, but it's also less of a continuation and more so the start of a new story arc within this peculiar world. I feel like I can't say much because spoilers, but we explore what the peculiar world is like in America and just how different it is compared to the other places we've explored in the original trilogy. My thoughts on A Map of Days. I think this is a great starting point for this new direction that the series is going in. It's definitely taking on this new direction and I'm really excited to see where it goes. I loved learning more about peculiardom in America because it's so different from the places that we went in the original trilogy, like so different. And I really liked the additions of the new characters that we got. And also there were just so many things that made relationships throughout this book super complicated. And I really liked that element, obviously. It has to be done well for me to enjoy it, but I enjoyed it in this book because it was done well. I'm also just really excited for where the story is going because I feel like it's going in a great direction and I can't wait to see how things develop. I mean, I'll probably enjoy what's to come regardless because you could write a book about the peculiars getting together to have a picnic and I would love that. I would eat that right up. That's how 
trash I am for the Peculiar Gang. The last book on my list and my ultimate favorite from the year of 2019 is Frankly in Love. I am frankly in love with this book. I feel like that pun has been used way too often, but here I am using it again. This book is about this boy named Frank Lee, who is Korean American, and he is doing everything he can to make his parents happy. After his sister married somebody that his parents don't approve of, he's felt even more pressured because of that. He ends up falling for this white girl, but the thing is, his parents want him to date only Korean. In order to cover up this situation, he ends up teaming up with a family friend who is also in a similar boat, dating someone her parents would never approve of, and together they end up in this fake dating scenario to cover up their real relationships. My thoughts on Frankly in Love. This book just had everything going for it that I love. Fake dating? Yes please. Heavy talks about family and complicated family relationships? Yes please. Korean culture threaded throughout it? Yes please. Fantastic writing style? A yes please. I feel like I have entered a gush fest and I can't get out. I can't help myself, it just did so many things that I love. From the writing style to the characters to just the overall story arc, I loved it. And I need more books from David Yoon ASAP. So those were my favorite books from the year of 2019, all the books that I loved. Let me know down below in the comments if you guys have read any of these books and what your thoughts are on them, or just let me know down below in the comments some of your favorite books from this year. If you like this video, be sure to go and hit that like button. If you want to see more bookish content from me, be sure to go and hit subscribe or go and hit that bell icon and you'll be notified every time I post new videos. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope your day is bright and that tomorrow is brighter. Keep reading what your heart desires and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye! Oh.